So. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, what do I say to the statement that the, the new age will be an age of laughter? Uh, uh, I can't make that statement. It's not, it's not mine to make. I think it's a beautiful thing. But I, more, I am more into the statement that the new age will be a new age of laughter for me. So I think it's more, uh, it is far better to work on oneself than to focus and work on, um, have hope for the others. Uh, I don't have hope for humanity. I can't. The world is perfect already. It's a complete mess. That's how it's designed to be. Uh, so my hope is a hope for me, a hope to become a better version of myself, a hope to have more laughter into my life, but not even the laughter. I don't have that goal too much because I see laughter as a tool, a means to an end. The end is the no mind thing. The being present, aligned, here, now, with a positive attitude, detached from the outcome of your actions, completely at peace with what is, in a state of equanimity. I see laughter as a gross manifestation. It's a very powerful energy, and that's a gross type of energy. I'm more into the smiling end of the spectrum, where there is lots of laughter, but it's a, has a, it has a very different, there's a very different quality to it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I am joyful every single day, except, of course, on those days when I'm not. So what is the joy to me? Uh, the <clears throat> what is the, my joy is to be aligned with my own path. And what that is, is my own path. I can't really share because it's my own path. And it's not something that can be duplicated. We all have, each have our own respective path. My own joy comes when I lose track of time. So when I am so engrossed into what I'm doing that is meaningful to me and time disappears, I am in a state of joy. And time just literally disappears. Uh, it will just expand. It may, uh, I'm, it may feel like hours when it's been like seconds or feel like seconds when it's been like hours, more like that. It feels like seconds but it's been hours because I'm completely into specific topics. Uh, I'm into creativity, playfulness. Um, and so when I'm in that state for me specifically, uh, I just lose track of time. I'm, I'm aligned with me. Uh, and as I'm, on, I'm on track, I'm on purpose. It feels right. I have this alignment between head, heart and uh, um, pelvis. It's just, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> So you want to know more about my work and the sections of the work of my work that are more joyful to me. Um, <clears throat> I am a teacher at heart, and I define teachers as people who can't help but mess up with other people's lives. <laughs> and so uh, I, I have this, uh, this is a calling. I'm on purpose when I, uh, I do want to help others, not because it helps them, but because it helps me. Because uh, it's, uh, I, it's something I refer to, it's not my own terms, as altruistic egoism. Uh, I do everything for me. I've discovered that the more I give, the more I receive. That I cannot lose what I'm giving away. And so I give lots away. And I can't, because I have it to give. And because I have it to give, I never l lose it. Uh, what is most joyful to me, that takes us back to the question you asked me before, what is my joy? What is most joyful to me varies depending on my mood state, time of the year, is when I'm on purpose. And it brings, it always has some, some to do, something to do with creativity, with, with playfulness, with uh, sharing something with others that's meaningful to them, that then becomes very meaningful to me. Helping others be on purpose, find their purpose, um, reinforces my own sense of purpose. It's a divine paradox. You don't need others to live, but you cannot survive or thrive without others. <laughs> this is entertaining. <laughs> Keep asking. <laughs>